Hi, I'm Marcus with the IndieMusicLab.com. So in today's video, you are going to learn how to layer multiple electric guitar tracks together to make your indie rock production sound more professional, sound fuller, and just more interesting. I've narrowed it down to three tips. Let's get into it. So to give you an example of what this could sound like in the context of a song, I pulled up a remake of Phoebe Bridger's song, Kyoto, which sounds like this. Day off in Kyoto, the board at the temple looked around at seven. Right, so we've got some electric guitar tracks layered in here to create this soundscape, this indie rock sort of guitar arrangement. So let's dive into the three tips for getting this sound. Tip number one is use the LCR approach or left, center, right. And I'm talking about the panning of your different takes that you might have. So it can be a great move to record three uh, electric guitar takes in total and then pan one left, one center, one right. That's exactly what we did here. So I have the center electric guitar doing this, and then the left guitar doing this, and then the right guitar all together. And it's all different takes. The left and the right ones are playing similar styles, right? You've got the muted and then it slightly opens up sometimes, but they're not perfectly mirroring each other. And then the center one, we've got just playing this. Very basic power chords uh, with not a ton of distortion, it's fairly clean. And that's the left, center, right approach. It's very simple, very standard, but it works. It's one of those things that if you don't know what to do and you're making an indie rock song, just use this. Record three guitar parts, one left, one center, one right, and you can even bring them in and out at different parts of the song to add dynamics. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is to maximize the variations of the guitar tones. What I mean by this is, on as many levels as possible, make each guitar almost act as a standalone instrument, if you will. Starting with the guitar itself, so I'm only using one guitar, one guitar, because I only have one really decent guitar on hand and it's a Fender Telecaster. But on all of these three takes, I adjusted the knobs, the treble, the bass, the tone, all of that before I even recorded. I adjusted the pickups. And so you wanna adjust it like that. That way you get this sense of variance. So it's not all the exact same tone. Same goes for the amp settings. I've got different amp settings. This one down the middle, the guitar in the center, I have, I'm using my GTR tool rack. This is from Waves. I just used a preset uh, here. For the left and the right guitars, I used Ampire, which is a stock amp modeling plugin inside of Studio One. And I used different presets. So I've got American OD for the one on the left. And then the one on the right, I've got the Crunch Punch preset. Another thing that I did was that differentiates the left and the right guitars here is the left guitar, now this is in the key of F. The left guitar, I have capo on the first fret and I'm playing E shapes, right? The right guitar, I've got the capo all the way up on the fifth fret and I'm playing C shapes, right? And even that gives it that slight bit of extra separation. So they're not playing the exact same uh, notes at the exact same place on the fretboard. No, there's that bit of variance to add interest and to add that sense of separation. It just makes the overall sonic landscape more interesting. Right, so that's tip number two. Make sure that you are adding variance on as many levels as possible to your guitar tracks. All right, one more tip to go. Before we get there though, I do wanna let you know about my free chord sheet. So this is six essential chords in every key. It's a free guide. It'll really help you to get an understanding of, let's say you're writing a song and you don't know which chords you should use or which are even the standard chords. Well, that's where this guide comes in. It gives you in every single key, the six essential chords you need to know. And it'll give you that baseline to start from. That way, when you do want to branch out and create more interesting chords, at least you know the basics, you know the foundation, which is very important. So if you've been struggling to know which chords you should use, then this is gonna really help you out. It's 100% free, link is in the description. It's the six essential chords in every key. It's really gonna help you out. So make sure you grab yourself a copy. All right, let's move on to tip number three. All right, tip number three for layering electric guitars for indie rock is layer in an acoustic guitar. 
Now this is really cool because what an acoustic guitar does is it adds that extra level of dynamic variation, which is great because the more of these tracks you have, the more you can bring some in and drop some out and create that sense of the story of the song, you can watch it unfold more. And as you can see here in the intro, I've just, just the acoustic guitars playing, right? And then when the verse hits, everything comes in, right? But even here, if I take it away, oh my god. You barely notice the acoustic guitar was there until I mentioned it and until I took it away. Because when you take it away, huge difference. So acoustic guitar can be an incredible way to add a bit of texture and um, it's just a way of layering in with the electric guitars you already have. And it really is a true layer because this electric guitar down the middle, this electric guitar here and this acoustic guitar are playing virtually the same thing. Rhythmically anyway. The electric guitar one is playing power chords and I'm playing more, more or less standard chords with the acoustic guitar playing C shapes up on the fifth fret, I think. And so that is a great way to add that extra level of texture and the realness and authentic authenticity to your track. So my friend, those are my three tips for layering electric guitars for indie rock productions. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm going to play this from start to finish. Before I do though, once again, be sure to download the six essential chords in every key guide. It's really going to help you out for when you're writing your songs and you're not sure which chords to use. This gives you the framework, the foundation, the six essential chords you need to know for the songs you write. All right, here we go. I'm just going to play this and then we'll wrap it up. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Day off in Kyoto, I boarded the temple.